Hi, everybody. This is John Keogh, and I'm the chairman of the Trace Alliance program. And I, I wanted to go through a short presentation with you this morning or just to look at it as more of a briefing. And the team has asked me to give my expert view on blockchain driven value chain transparency and trust. So let, let's talk about that. And I, I want to go through this kind of briskly. And I think you'll get a lot of value from the slides. So when we look at a supply chain, a supply chain is very complex. I mean, we're talking about multiple countries, multiple languages, and even multiple ways of doing things with different technologies and different standards. So when, but when we look at the supply chain, we can't only look at it from the technology perspective. We have to look at some of the key questions that analytical laboratories will help us to answer. And so Software cannot answer these questions. We have to be realistic here. So what is my, what's the nutritional profile of a product? We have to share that with a consumer from a transparency perspective. And if, is my food safe to eat? Of course, software cannot determine that. We have to rely on food safety uh, inspections and audits to be able to do that. And is my food really organic? Now, organic is what's called a credence attribute. And as is a lot, a lot of things like this claims on that something is pesticide free and so on and so forth. A credence attribute means that a consumer cannot verify before or after purchase. So we need to, in some way, shape or form, provide a, a transparent information to the consumer where the consumer can find out more about the organic certification process. Hence, when we're talking about supply chain complexity and we're talking about uh, some, some claim that a product is organic, we need to find ways to share that information with the consumer, be transparent with that information, not only about the fact that it's organic, but where can the consumer get more information about the organic certification and who certified it and so on and so forth. And as you go down on the list here, you'll see a lot of other things like is, is the animal feed safe? And we know that in se several countries, we do have fake uh, animal feed as well. And is my milk diluted? In some countries, it can be 75% plus uh, milk diluted, which is which is very unfortunate. And of course, down at the bottom here is my rice or coffee, really from Vietnam, and that's the the the, the key word here is provenance. And of course, software cannot uh, verify provenance. Software can give you uh, logistics or data provenance, but it can't give you true provenance, which is the scientific provenance. You need to be able to analyze the carbon 13 of a product to be able to determine where it's actually from. And, and these things become very very important when we look at putting in uh, technology to manage the complexity or simplify the complexity in a supply chain. So moving on, what is this word I was talking about, value chain transparency, what is that all about? So if we look at the words that surround transparency, we can talk about believability, honesty, fairness, sincerity, clarity, openness, truth, directness, and forthrightness. These are some of the words that come to mind when you're talking about uh, transparency. Remember that a company can be transparent with incorrect or misleading information. So it, it needs to be believable by a consumer. It needs to be truthful and it needs to be also timed. Uh, there's no point in sharing information if it's actually out of date or not relevant to the uh, product. And we know that, of course, this is not the answer for consumers either uh, in the past. Maybe some companies had this attitude, don't worry about it, what you don't know won't hurt you. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. We know that in the UK, uh, two people have died from uh, allergens in a uh, product, and that's very unfortunate. The, these, are, these are issues that, that are avoidable. These companies just did not follow regulations, and, uh, and they could have labeled their products adequately and safely. The coroner's report was quite scathing to say that uh, the products could have been labeled and should have been labeled uh, more effectively. Of course, there's a role for the consumer to play in asking questions as well in Europe, but with EU 1169, which drives transparency for allergens, uh, there's no excuse on all sides. There are two deaths that just should not have occurred. So don't worry about it. Uh, what you don't know won't hurt you is not the way forward. And, and luckily enough, 99.9% .9 of industry uh, don't follow that, uh, that thinking either. 
But when you look at a product, it may be as simple as an apple, but a consumer wants to know where, where it came from. And I've heard of cases where a product is, you know, being sold in New Zealand, but it was actually grown in the U.S. And I think that's important to share with the consumer. And also an apple, if I can pick on that one, an apple may have sat in a barrel for eight months in a dark uh, room before it actually got to the uh, supermarket. So we have still have a long way to go. And I think, well, once, once I talked with a CEO of an apple uh, producer, and he said to me, he said, John, do you think it's in the consumer's interest to know that the apple may have sat in the bottle for months before it got to the supermarket shelf? And I, my answer to that was absolutely. I think it is uh, it is important. And similarly, if a product is uh, is changed, if there's any uh, GMO, any modifications to the product, we need to tell the consumer for sure. We need to be transparent on that. So when you look at what is transparency, then transparency of a net chain is the extent to which all of the net chain stakeholders have a shared understanding and access to product related information that they request. This is very important without loss, noise, delay and distortion. There's no point in providing information to consumers that they have not requested. So, for example, uh, I heard of a client uh, once who provided technical information from an analytical laboratory uh, about uh, the forensic testing that was done and this scared the consumers based on feedback so they stopped sharing that so if you look at uh, again this is one of my favorite uh, academics uh, here at Hofstede here John Hofstede he talks about if information is the lifeblood of an organization transparency is what enables it to flow so hopefully that gives you a view on on transparency and I think this definition is really really strong product related information that they request without loss, noise, delay, or distortion. And this is where the loss, noise, delay, or distortion can come about when you don't have standards. And this is where the origin trail protocol really shines by being able to reduce the loss and uh, and also take out the distortion or the, the, the delay in between sharing information between uh, parties. So when we look at value chain trust, this is something a little bit easier to understand. We don't have to go around with uh, with uh, magnifying glasses, but you know, Ronald Reagan said to us, yeah, "Yeah, trust everyone, but you need to verify the data." And I think this is very important. If we look at, there's more than 140 definitions of trust that I could find uh, online or in my academic research, but the one that's uh, pulling them all together is this one here. And they say that trust is really a psychological state comprising of the intention to accept a vulnerability based on positive expectations of the intentions or behaviors of another. Well, basically what that means is that when this family is sitting down here for, for uh, their Thanksgiving dinner, that they are indeed vulnerable and they expected the whole supply chain to have acted in their best interest. So trust but verify um, and, and the origin trail protocol will help us to enable the transparency and build trust into our supply chains moving forward. So now when we look very quickly at the theory behind the origin trail Yamashiji use case, this is very similar to the one of Walmart uh, using their, their mango. So I want to bring your focus down to the bottom of this chart here. When we look at RMT on the left, what I mean there is regulation mediated transparency and the TMT is technology mediated transparency. And let me just draw your attention down below the line here where we have one up, one down regulations and we have what's called history transparency and calculus-based trust. Basically, if I can net out what this really means, uh, the history transparency and calculus-based trust, regulations is down here. Regulation is actually based on mistrust. And so are strong contracts that companies put in place with their suppliers because they're managing for risk. History transparency here is like looking in the rear view mirror of your car, looking at what happened or where you have been. Whereas in the case of Yamashiji, they uh, opted for more voluntary trust building by getting all of the trading partners onto the uh, origin trail uh, protocol. Essentially, from a, from a theoretical perspective, they move towards what we call strategic transparency, bi-directional flow of information, which is future focused and focused on, on business growth that will help all of the parties in the supply chain. And then the identification based trust. Can you imagine Yamashiji sitting down with their suppliers and, and if they ask the question, do you want to kill or injure uh, your customers? The answer, of course, is no. So Yamashiji wants to bring safe, reliable and trusted products to the market that consumers can really believe in. 
if they're you know organic, pesticide free, and so on and so forth, natural, whatever credence attribute is associated with the product. So Yimishiji was successful in doing this and work, working towards strategic based transparency and identification based trust and using smart data, blockchain, and the origin trail protocol. This is a different way of building trust in the supply chain, and it's the most sustainable way. So hopefully this model gives you a little bit of the feeling of how transparency and trust can build together and form, uh, are actually supported by, by theory as well. Now, just on conclusions, I want to finish with this. Uh, we just hit the 10 minute mark. Uh, really what I, what I, what I'd strengthen, like to strengthen is we have to fix the data fragmentation issues and overcome the limitations of one up, one down. So in fact, regulation is in fact holding us back today, but blockchain and the origin trail protocol will help us go beyond the requirements and exceed what the regulatory requirements are. But we also have to utilize industry standards like GS1 and integrated technology platforms that can enhance that transparency and increase the trust. And they create, of course, more value for consumers. And of course, this is key to the Origin Trail protocol because it's based on GS1 standards for product and farm identification and the party identification, party meaning the actual company. And uh, when, you, when you enable all of that based on GS1 standards, then you have the interoperability built in. And the Origin Trail protocol is based on the joint GS1 ISO standard called EPCIS. And this is what really creates a lot of strength in the supply chain. So my, my final word here is start experimenting now. Start experimenting with, uh, with blockchain. You cannot go wrong with the Origin Trail protocol, and it does not conflict with applications that are out there. If you already have a blockchain in place, but you're not GS1 enabled or not GS1 compliant, and you cannot talk to other blockchains, this is where you can integrate significantly with the uh, uh, Origin Trail protocol. And a lot of companies, including companies that have blockchains, are now members of the Trace Alliance program. There's more than 60 companies in there right now, and it's, it is a collaboration hub for accelerating the blockchain adoption. So if you're an app provider, if you're a brand owner, if you're a retailer, get involved in the Trace Alliance. Listen and learn or and share with us the best uh, practices that you've, you're finding or work with other companies in here on uh, use cases as well. There's a lot of rich materials that the team can share, and there's also a video on the Yimishiji use case, which actually has screenshots, and it will show you how the Origin Trail protocol actually worked in driving towards transparency for key attributes in the supply chain. And the other thing I'd like to leave you with, finally, is the open call, and this is very important. We're looking for 10-plus projects, and there's a lot of rewards in here as well for companies. And uh, if you want to apply uh, at the Origin Trail uh, for the Origin Trail open call, just click on the address at the bottom here. And uh, this is very exciting. We're looking for uh, successful use cases that are out there using the Origin Trail protocol. And there's a couple of rewards in here as well for you. So thank you very much, and uh, and happy blockchaining. We'll talk to you again soon.